perhaps starting with foreign exchange losses, because just looking through the income statement, that seems to stand out. You had a 79 million rand cost, and that's up from 16 million rand last year. Correct. Uh, and good evening to you. The, the issue really has been the strength of the, the rand and also the strength of the Chilean peso from both currencies against the dollar has given rise to that uh, charge. And I presume this is something that uh, going forward remains one of those uncertainties for your earnings and something that investors just have to live with. Absolutely. Um, I would fully anticipate that some of it will probably reverse in the, in the six months we're in now. Take a look at, at your revenue. Gaming revenue up 8% to 3.5 billion rand. Most of that growth coming from the slots. Have you seen a noticeable rise in visitors to casinos as economic growth starts to pick up and the recovery takes place? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think to say there's a recovery already is a bit ambitious. Um, I think in certain locations we've seen some growth. Obviously, we saw very strong growth in our Chilean business, um, which is relatively new. But really, if you look at it, um, kind of our biggest three casinos in South Africa, the, the growth was very marginal, uh, you know, in Cape Town, in Gauteng, and, and, and Durban. Um, to be honest, the, the growth was significantly lower than that. Well, Monticello does stand out. Revenue up 30%, 512 million rand. Uh, EBITDA margin up 13% as well. And that's despite a month-long strike at that casino, so faring pretty well. Yes, no, things have definitely improved substantially. And we expect should continue to improve over the next two to three years. Take us through the other ones, Grand West and Carnival City. How, how did they fare? Uh, you know, revenue is fairly subdued. Um, it's not going backwards, but it's not growing fast either. And, uh, you know, quite a lot of pressure on margins because some of our costs have, you know, improved quite or increased um, quite dramatically, um, particularly, you know, energy costs, property rates and taxes, you know, things like that. Uh, hotel room revenue up 14%, but it looks like it was largely due to higher room rates because occupancies were down. Now, this is for the period from July to December. Given the World Cup finished in July, would you have expected a, a bit of a better performance from hotel room occupancies? We certainly would have hoped for better performance, and, and really the performance in South Africa since July has been uh, very disappointing, very slow. You know, bear in mind there's Rooms revenues would have been helped by, by Chile, where the hotel wasn't open in this period last year, and also quite an improvement in, in, in Nigeria. So, you know, you kind of strip those out. You look at um, the local hotels, you know, the growth has been fairly slow. How about some of your other hotels in Zambia and Botswana, for example? How are they faring? Well, Botswana's been a little better. Zambia's been quite hard hit with, you know, international tourism. Um, you know, global tourism is, is, is still suffering, and, and particularly to the region, business out of the UK, US is significantly down year on year. What's, what are the prospects going forward, though? Because you're spending quite a lot of money refurbishing some of your properties, uh, for instance, in the Wild Coast Sun. The second phase of that redevelopment's uh, been completed. You're going into the third phase, and that's going to cost about 400 million rand. So looking forward, are you seeing much brighter prospects that warrant these refurbishments? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is a, is, is a long-term business. The kind of refurbishment we're going through now is once every 25, 30 years probably in, 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 in the, the scale of the refurbishment. Um, and, and that's the kind of age of the property older than that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think over the long term we do see obviously an improvement in prospects. Casino license is going forward. I know you've got the one for the boardwalk in the Eastern Cape. You're a partner in that uh, casino over there. How about the exclusivity in the Grand West in the Western Cape? Because that expired in December. When would you have more finality on that? Well, we're really waiting for, for uh, the provincial government. Um, there's been no further word from them for a little while. We understand they've been doing some consulting. And I think, you know, looking quite carefully and hard at their options. Uh, obviously an important decision, not just for us, but I guess for the province as well. Well, we talked about the, the strong rand and the peso. Uh, going forward, though, because it's not just a translation effect for your earnings, it's also whether foreign visitors are going to be coming with the rand looking as strong as this. What, what, what are you seeing at this point? Are you seeing perhaps any repeat visitors that came over from the World Cup? 
Look, I, I, I don't think one anticipates that large numbers of people at Canada World Cup would be coming to South Africa already, or, or necessarily even that's the business. You know, some of those might come in, in, in years to come. I think more importantly, it's the message that they take home with them, the experience that they've had, and the message about the country. And I have little doubt that that was very positive. So I do think as economies recover, um, one might well see some improved visitation. Yeah, interestingly enough, there, there are markets where one is seeing some quite nice growth. I think South America, India, uh, places like that, one has seen you know, quite nice growth in, in, in recent times.